run it back. We've got another major news alert, and this episode is brought to you by HK Army. If you are going to Texas for the NXL Lone Star Major, you are not going to want to miss out on this unbelievable deal as HK Army is offering $20 cases of paint again to anyone attending the event from April 26th to the 28th. And that means anyone, any teams, regardless of sponsorship, can get level 5 exclusive tournament paint for only $20 a case, and the new formula is shooting outstanding. HK is always doing what they can to make the best paintballs more cost-effective for you, and all you got to do is hit up my boy, the Leopard King, Chad Yaya Boucher, who is the sponsorship coordinator for HK Army, to reserve your paint today. Email him right now at chad at hkarmy.com to secure your spot on the paint list. Once again, that's chad, C-H-A-D, at hkarmy.com. And do not wait. This is going to sell out. Email him right now and secure your paint for Texas. This episode is brought to you by Lone Wolf Paintball. They are an amazing online supplier and have been around since the beginning of the game as Michigan's premier paintball field and paintball supplier since 1987. They are rapidly expanding into the online retail space and supplying everything you need to be the best paintball player you can be. They have got it all. Head over to LoneWolfPaintball.com and shop all of your favorite brands. And they also boast amazing customer service and will have this out to you with same day shipping, which is amazing. It's always nice to know that your stuff is on its way immediately so you can start to use it that very next week in a play. Check out their YouTube, Lone Wolf Paintball, and their Instagram, at Lone Wolf PB, and stay up to date with all of their deals and sales. Play the Game Podcast is immensely honored to have them on board, and we cannot wait for you guys to check out LoneWolfPaintball.com and become a part of their community. PTG family, we love you. Thank you all for continuing to support the PTG show. We are truly forever grateful for each and every single one of you that tunes in on a weekly basis. And if you are enjoying these episodes and want to help with the progress and development of this program, head on over to ptgpodcast.com, click the orange Patreon link, and become a member of our community. That's where you can connect with hungry, like-minded paintball players, enjoy paintball seven days a week in our exclusive chat rooms, and ensure that we can continue to keep cultivating the future of paintball for years to come. It's all love for paintball. It's all love for PTG. We can't wait to see you in there. Head over to ptgpodcast.com and become a member of our community. What's going on, PTG Nation? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This episode, we have Tom Cole back. He was just on last week, so this is going to be a little shorter of an episode, um, but he has some major, major news, and it sounds like there's going to be millions of eyes on paintball soon. So... You definitely want to listen to this one, like for sure. All right, without further ado, we're going to hop in the show. That was an insane inside move by Marcelo Margot. Great communication. And the crowd starts chanting Harmon. Great, great shot by all the guys. So Tyler Harmon saved that game. Came out with two wins. Marcelo Margot was on fire. All right, everybody, we are back with the president of Major League Paintball, the NXL, Mr. Tom Cole. He has some exciting news to share. He was just on the on the show last week, but uh, this is some some pretty great stuff. So we had to have him back on to release some great information to the to the paintball public. Tom, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? Excellent. Thanks Welcome for having back, me, guys. Tommy. Dude, thank, thank you, you very much. Here. Absolutely. Thank you. It's like my, good to my see weekly it. update call. Yeah, man. <laughs> And we've got the classic for the YouTube. We've got the classic NXL 2022 backdrop. And yeah, we're, ready we to, we're ready to send it. And you have some amazing news. You've been working really hard. I know NXL Texas is right around the corner. So every day is just a, a grindstone that you're having to work to get ready for the event. But we're stoked to have you here. You have some news that you wanted to share in regards to possible um, new ways of getting eyes on paintball, essentially. Yeah, so we just we signed a deal with a company, um, Caffeine TV, um, and we've been kind of keeping it under wraps a little bit, but we signed a deal with Caffeine TV. It's a new sports, um, basically like a, a landing page for sports, almost like a YouTube, but for extreme sports and stuff. Um, so yeah. they've been putting up our videos after the events, uh, the webcast after the events, and we've been seeing like amazing amount of views and watch time and all that stuff. So they're pretty excited, and they are 
they have 60 million users right now. They're up from 5 million to 60 million. So they're growing very rapidly, acquiring a lot of other sports. They just acquired the rights to live golf. Um, yeah. So, That's and major. they just had a big wow. announcement. Um, and we just had a call and we're not completely to fruition now, but we had a call with them last week and they said that because of our viewership ranking, um, the, and and the company actually watched some of our stuff. They're interested in coming on board and being a brand sponsor for the Texas event. So, um, so it's pretty cool. So it, I feel like it's moving in the right direction. You know, every time we make one of these steps, it's kind of a big deal. And to have an, an outside company, I can't name the company, but a real outside company come in and watch our video and see our, our users. <coughs> Forgive me, I'm a little sick, but um. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> to see our users coming on and, and and how much growth we have actually wanting to partner with us. I think that's that's pretty impressive. Badass that's, is what I'm going to say. It is. That's badass. It's impressive. It's all of the above. And I kind of want to run it back because you even had mentioned that they are working with Live Golf. And I'm, I'm a huge golf fan. And I know how much uh, attention that tournament series is getting with the PGA and, you know, Live kind of competing. And so that's a pretty huge pickup for them to be working with Live Golf as well. Yeah, and they're working. I mean, they started out obviously with some fringe stuff, but yeah, they've been doing big things. Um, yeah. They're part of, I believe, Fox. Um, but when I look up everybody that I meet with, they're all former executives in the TV world. So um, one of the ladies, she was part of the, I, I think it was the Miss America pageant. I would have mm -hmm. to relook her up, but yeah. Yeah. <coughs> So, yeah, yeah no, it's pretty good stuff. Um, I was hoping to be able to announce the sponsor. That's when we were talking about that last week. We we're supposed to have it done at the end of last week, but we didn't end up getting it done yet. So we're still in the works, still in the works. Well, I mean, you're working your butt off. I know right now is crunch time, especially we're heading out to Texas in, you know, just a matter of a few days here. So, yeah, and I, I leave Monday. I or actually I leave Sunday for the NAB show, which is the National Association for Broadcasters. So. We're going oh, to wow. see what we got to do to up our game on the video side of things. Where's that going to be at? That's in Las Vegas. Hey, back in Vegas. There we go. Back in Vegas. Yep. <laughs> Everybody else thinks it's happy, but I'm, I hate going to Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Now, now Tom, uh, is that in regards to go sports or how you guys can broadcast this in post-production or through major league paintball? Um, All of you both. Um, okay. I, I went to the NAB show probably four years ago. Um, and you know, in, in our lifespan, that's been a long time, right? Like we've learned a lot about the TV world and all the different stuff that we're doing. So the, the, the NAB show also does like, you know, stuff about the fast channels and stuff about the OTT stuff and all that stuff, stuff that we're working on, but also a lot of equipment for filming. And yes, Go Sports still is the primary person. We're just working closer and closer with them to kind of bring the productions. We're not like a fire and forget with them or anything. You know what I mean? They're a great partner. So we're trying to, to do as much as we can, you know, and we have vision. So we're going to try and push that vision forward. What kind of, what kind of visions do you have for, for broadcasting? No rest for the weary. Um, <laughs> that's tricky. I'm not going to get into all that. Um, I have to get into all of it, but some of it. No, I mean, I mean, we, we want to, I mean, right now we're trying to create a pilot. That's a 40 minute long pilot. 44 minutes, I believe is the exact thing um, of one of our tournaments. Um, but just the final games with post-produced, but with lots of cool camera angles um, to try and improve the way you can track the game. So the problem we have now is it's happening live, right? And there's no core focal point, right? Which is all established, right? Um, but what would be neat is after we've post-produced, we know the move's going to happen, right? So if, if Tyler's coming down and he's going to bunker you out of the Dorito or something, we have a hard time catching that on the webcast. But in post-produced, we can go back and recreate that. And we would recreate that like it was live because this is our pitch deck for a show. We would, you know, go back and kind of make it all work. Yeah. No, so absolutely. we need a 40 minute one and like a 22 minute one. I think it's 44 minutes and 22 minutes because one's a 30 minute show. One's an hour long show. So we need to see one, how our match holds up because we may need to tweak the timing of our matches, right? If we end up on a, in a live broadcast, that's an hour long at show, right? Maybe our matches need to be 20 minutes. You know what I mean? Or whatever the number needs to be to make it to make it work. So mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things we got from the show in Monaco was I looked at other people's pitch decks and they all included a basically a 30 minute show and an hour long show with commercials. Yeah. Yeah, of course, to, you know, 
show the sport at the highest level and all the intricacies of what's going on out there. There's a lot of details and it'll look really, really good in that post-production. Yeah. And a lot of people like the, the, the number one advice I get is to do something like the, um, you know, like the golf behind the scenes or the formula one behind the scenes. Cause that created a lot of fans and, and it did. And it's been amazing for those sports. And I think it's something that would be compelling for us, right. Whether we followed an impact, the heat, uh, yeah, a dynasty, you know what I mean? But all those things have a live show also that they're watching. Right. So we can't create just a docu series and not have, a viable live show on TV as well. So you kind of need yeah. both. Well, one will drive viewership, but it won't drive viewership if there's no show in existence. Of course. If that makes sense. So yeah. so we, we need both. In reality, we need both. It's like when we're uh, doing clinics or pro schools and players ask us, what do I need to work on? And say, well, it's not one thing. We have to work on everything. You know, you're kind of building the foundation across the board here. You know, it's the same thing. Um, yeah, we need, we need to improve the show. I do still believe wholeheartedly that some sort of docu series, you know, following multiple players from different teams and, and that journey would be huge, but you're absolutely right. We need to also, once you do capture that attention, you need them to get hooked on, on the show as well. So. Right. Exactly. We need yeah. a show for them to watch, right? Yes. Right. We need a viable show. And so, you know, we're, we're still looking to that lens thing. Um, I'm hoping there is some type of a lens filter that we could pick a certain paint color that will like really make that color pop on the film camera, whether that's in post produced or, or actually catching it raw on the film. Um, that'll be interesting. Um, I went to this show, like I said, four years ago and I learned a lot. Um, and I, like I said, I was very much a newbie at that point in time, I'm not saying I'm not still not a newbie, but four years later, like we've learned a lot. Um, so it, it'd be interesting to go back. Um, and I actually Bart's going with me. Um, and Darren. So it's me, Darren and Bart are all going to the show. Nice. nice. So yeah, it should be a, for uh, be a all the learning. people in the YouTube sound off in the comments. If you have any information in regards to, you know, the lenses and how that can be accomplished. Cause I know that there's a lot of people that work with, um, that kind of industry that might be able to sound off on some good answers for us there. The YouTube and Tom, you know, you get hounded every time you come on here. I'm sure the the people are. I get emails after every time, so I, I, I give you a shout out for that. For sure. Yeah, well, <laughs> we love you and we appreciate you for being here, Tom, and all that you're doing in the NXL in paintball in general. And as somebody who's been a part of this game for so long and was also a pro player, what's it like paving this new frontier of paintball and helping this game that you love so much try to reach new heights and get more exposure to the world? That's a, that's a loaded question. I feel like I'm on CNN or something. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, real deal. <laughs> it's the real deal. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's cool. I mean, it's, it, it's obviously it's like my life work, right? Like I've been in paintball since I was a kid. Um, and to see it growing exponentially is, is great. Right. It's amazing. Like literally all of my friends are involved in paintball. So like, you know, if I can make this big, then, then, you know, Ryan can, can help feed his growing family. Um, you know what I mean? Like a lot of the people that I care about are involved in the sport. Um, and so that part of it's cool, but it's also like, it's a game I fell in love with when I was a kid. And I just want to see as many people as I could exposed to it and be able to have a good time. Like I did. Yeah. But I mean, it's, you know, it's a lot of work. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Oh, a lot man. of work. It is it's, a lot of work. That's why um, People so. do not understand, like, all right, take this for instance. Me and Marcelo, we set up a booth at the WCPPL, <laughs> okay, a 10 by 10 booth. And we had mm -hmm. our podcast running there and we're covering divisional paintball, highlighting some of the winners from, you know, the tournament. We set up a 10 by 10 booth. We made so many mistakes just setting up a 10 by 10 booth. I can only imagine how difficult it is to have the amount of infrastructure that you guys all have and traveling with it and setting it up all over the place. It's, it's a, a lot of work and that's just, well, and that's one of the things that's really freed us up now is we, we have a great team, right? We have a great yeah. group of people that work for us, right? Everybody knows fatty, right? He's the guy that helps set yeah. stuff up, right? The fact yes, that sir. those guys do all that, right? Basically with very little insight from me, frees me up time to, to chase these rabbit holes, right? To go down and mm -hmm. find out what's going on or whatever. But it takes us, um, I'll give you an interesting number. It takes us just under 300 man days to set up and tear down the, uh, the events. Sheesh. So that's almost a person, one person working for a year. Obviously we have multiple <laughs> bodies, but yeah, that's, that's how many man days an event takes. Gosh. Just under 300. 
that's why. Yeah, we we were like complete infants. You know, we showed up and uh, you know we we were a lot more prepared than it, than it looked like. We ordered a, a nice uh, custom canopy about seven weeks ago. It was supposed to take two weeks to get done, and we just kind of kept getting the runaround. Uh, and so, long long story short, our canopy didn't show up, so we had to borrow a WC one. But you know, everyone's kind of making fun of us, and we're like, guys, we're like D three, D four down here. You know, we're we're divisional <laughs> ballers right again. You know, we got to climb the ranks. We got to figure out like we didn't know about straps we needed, but it was so awesome. So many of the other you know vendors were actually really helpful to us. Like, you know, we always talk about the paintball community from a player standpoint. I didn't realize like the vendors. Tyler and I were having dinner at BJ's, you know, we got a hotel up there. We went out to BJ's, you know, uh, for a little dinner at night. And we're like, you know, it's, this is such a different world, like not having the stress of, of competing. And, and, uh, even if you're coaching, it's, it's pretty stressful. It was like kind of fun. And that was the vibe the whole time with all the other vendors, you know, everyone was like really helpful to one another. It was like kind of its own community in itself, you know? And it's like, this sport just kind of through and through is so um, overwhelmingly helpful to one another for the most part, you know, there's, there's a few bad eggs everywhere, but um, yeah. it, it's really incredible, you know, and we got to experience that side of it and it was really cool. Well, and that's kind of the neat thing about my position, right? Like um, a lot of the people that run those companies were the players back in the day, right? So we've, our relationship with them has gone from being opponents on the field to now we're, we're partners in the, in the industry, right. Trying to make it grow. So, you know, we all have uh, history and bad blood and, and different stuff from back <laughs> in the day. So it, it makes stuff interesting. Yeah. To say the least. So to coming in least. <laughs> to going into Texas Lone Star major, we're a couple weeks out. What kind of work uh, do you all have to pull together and accomplish in order to make an event like that happen and let's kind of talk about the venue as well it's going to be at the same spot is that correct no it's at a new spot we've never new been spot. here before it's, it's at the audubon park in okay. garland texas um okay. and you know the the setup and all that stuff i mean it's different each time right that's one of the reasons why fatty likes it i think because it's a challenging in its own ways each time but um mm -hmm. that part is pretty standard the complicated stuff that we have to do that's stressful on our end is basically pulling the permits making sure all that goes through, right? Cause you got to meet each different city has different zoning permits to make sure everything goes through different insurance requirements. And then the F and B stuff is also quite complicated. We got to pull liquor licenses. We got to make sure everybody's got the proper insurance. And then we've got to uh, basically make sure all that stuff works. Yeah. Um, and that is the stressful part because it's typically right up to the wire of trying to make stuff happen. So when do they start to finalize that? Just like as soon as you guys get out there? Yeah, the final permit is drawn like usually the day before the event. Oh, wow. um, So that's the final walkthrough mm -hmm. to go through and approve the event. And yeah, it's, it's you know, sometimes that, you know, we have, we have to have an action plan for like what we do in case of an emergency and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, but sometimes they come through and they don't like our traffic flow or they don't like something that we have or a generator's too close to a tent wall or something like that. And they make us move the stuff and they kind of, you know, make you jump through some hoops. Um, and so that part's stressful for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. This is mean, stuff that most people don't even, don't even realize goes on behind the scenes of setting up one of these things. Yeah. yeah and there's always a chance they could say no, right. They could yeah. just say, you guys are not open for Friday. <laughs> You're like, yeah, no. <laughs> so, so we, we've definitely had to jump through a lot of hoops sometimes to make stuff happen. You know, if something's not going right. Yeah. Um, we've never had anything like that. Yeah. That's the stressful part, right? Especially when you're dealing with that. That's one of the nice things about like, um, I use Jed from Texas, right? We have an ICPL going there. Right. So we did a PSP there. Right. And, and we had some drama. Jed wasn't happy about some stuff. I think we drove a, a golf cart across the grass or something, destroyed the grass, you know? So he was obviously mad, you know, but the nice thing about working with someone inside of paintball, you know, the show must go on. Right. So they know, and I know that we've got to get through this regardless of whatever struggle it has. Right. So that's one of the benefits of working with a paintball park because they love the game as much as you do. So they don't want it to fail. Right. Yeah. Whereas a city, you know, that parks and recs person, it's not the end of his life. If he says this event doesn't happen today. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's that, like I said, that it, you could I, argue that that's actually, they, they kind of feel like they're doing their job. What do you mean? What do you mean if they stop us? Yeah, you know, like they're, yeah, exactly. they're, yeah, exactly. You know, they're like, oh, I finally got one. Finally got one. <laughs> not, yes. not, not realizing uh, the negative effect it could have on the city as well. 
yeah, I mean, we obviously would probably never go back with some place that was whatever. But I mean, we've had to call, we've had to call the mayor. We've had to call different people to get like, I think one of our first events, we, one of our, in the first year, we definitely had a, uh, a mayor's uh, override on any permits, um, last minute permits. Wow. So we had that in writing that we could break out if, um, if we didn't pass something. Yeah, you guys have never like had a delay on the event, so you've you, whatever hoops you had to jump through, you guys were doing it. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. The best was the Florida Hurricane one, right? So, oh, man, yeah, that one was incredible. The fact that that World Cup got off the ground and we were able to compete that weekend was unbelievable. Yeah, I was pretty. I was very impressed with the whole operation there. So, yeah. I mean, and, and everybody came together, right? Especially our refs and our crew, right? They, you know, they came back out there and worked. You know, so did a great job, mm -hmm. did a great job. That's awesome. Well, let's talk about Caffeine TV a little bit more. So you said that they've grown to 60 million viewers and they're looking to help bring more eyes to paintball. In what ways are they going to help with that viewership? So they control the algorithms, right? So they can do a lot of stuff to push, to push the channel, right? So as we start to move up and become viable and they're actually, you know, we're interested in partnering with them further, you know, kind of having more and more deals. But the more special programming we have for them, the more they push it out, right? So they're talking a million plus viewers on the next show. Um, and well, what is going to be, you said, I think you said uh, they want to do that for Texas. Is that right? Um, they do want to do that for Texas. And then they also had talked about doing maybe some type of special programming, like like an event that was exclusively through Caffeine. Oh, wow. oh, interesting. That'd be, so that'd be maybe crazy. that would be a standalone event. Maybe that would be something right. else, right? Obviously, right. we could do that with one of the major league paintball events, but we could do, you know, right. a pro invitational or something like that to film. Mm -hmm. I still like my champions. I was, we, yeah. we, I was gonna say we we will do the uh, pro invitational three seven format. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, we got you for Gabby TV. I'll just put a buzzer on the side of my mask, and like you know, every time the opponent hits that, you get like four points. I got people that want to slap it. That's for sure. That's a good, it's a, it's a good <laughs> idea. People slapping that. Dude, you might be buzzers. better off if Ryan wore it. But Yo, buzzers, just put buzzers everywhere in every bunker, and you, you just have to go up and down the field. Yeah. You don't hit it once? Yep. I've seen so, you play a lot of bunkers at some point in time. Yeah. yeah. It's 20 points yourself. I'll be all in those. <laughs> that would be interesting. That would be a, a fun way to keep the game very active. Like if every spot you went to, you hit a buzzer. It's like, okay, I'm accumulating points, you know, and they would have to be a fractal of, of what an actual point's worth, you know, but if you could accumulate points, like if you go to, you know, four different bunkers, that equals one point, you know, if, it, if it's like, you know, point five. It would keep people moving, right? It would keep people moving. Yeah. Stop, yeah. Them, stop them just setting um, up those things, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, no, so so Tom, so Caffeine TV for say they come in and they do want to showcase Texas, uh, they would what just receive the stream from Go Sports or would this be post produced stuff? Will this so be live would, stuff? This would go afterwards. Yeah, we can't okay. go live with a free okay. channel, right? So okay. we're not looking to go live on a free channel. Um, I mean, if they pay enough, like, you are. They call that freemium, right? Yeah, but they're never going to pay that. Right. I mean, well, as sure. of right now, they're not going to pay that much. I shouldn't say never. That's the final okay. goal, right? But um, yeah it's a freemium channel right which means that it's free for them if you want to watch if you want to watch the finals right if you want to watch hurricanes win texas <laughs> um then uh then you watch that live and then if you know if you missed it and you wanted to see how they won then you go back and you watch it on caffeine but it's more it's getting non paintball people to watch it right it's getting absolutely people watching live golf or whatever stuff right and kind of just coming on over so yeah. Now, is Caffeine TV uh, a streaming platform kind of like Netflix to where you you go on to the platform and you select anything you want and you could play it from start to finish? Or does it have like actual broadcasted times, you know, to where this would be so, on at like 9 p.m. Pacific? This is more like this is a blend of both, but it's a, it's a lot like YouTube. OK. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you go on there, I'm on there right now, but it's got like, you know, uh, and where are you so the listeners can check it out too? What website can they? Caffeine.tv. Caffeine.tv. Go log in and check it out. Um, they have football, action, sports, soccer. If you just type in major golf, if you type in major league paintball, we come right up. But it's got the World Surf League, Live Golf, the Karate Combat, the X Games. Um, so we're in good company up there. Tom, man, well, once this, again, is, this is awesome. 
Nice work. Each one of these, you know, it's not, you know, it's, you know, none of it's hitting the buzzer, right? But it is controlling the 50, right? So as we, you know, every little move we make puts us in a better position to get the win, right? We're not going to just shoot everybody on the break, right? We're just not built for that. So we are, we are just working our way down the field and trying to get this thing to work. So, and the more contacts we got and the more people circle back around, it's all, I mean, it's a work in progress. I mean, it, it feels like it's going fast on our end, but I know, you know, it's been a long, slow ride for the sport. That's right. And, and more than likely it will continue to be, you know, uh, a slow trickle effect where we just keep pushing forward and keep having fun with it. And, you know, I think it's going to be a first, I think it's going to be a first. I think by the early next year, I think we're going to have something good. Right. I feel like the the pressure is just building. Right. I feel like everything is just going in the right direction. So, um, tremendous. So how can, how can, I know we want to get non-viewers to watch paintball, but how can the paintball community go to bat and help in any way to support this? Once again, I reiterate to everybody, let's keep everything PC. Anytime we get these outside sponsors on our, on our stuff, you'd be amazed at the stuff that people write in our threads. Yeah. Um, it's, it's no, I know. just I know. amazing to me. And so Calvin, when you see you know, that, uh, PTG goes to bat. You know, we're in there. Yeah. We're in there uh, fighting off fires and try to. <laughs> I saw the, the guy complaining about me calling them customers instead of players. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I, I like that you think about them as a customer because it holds, holds a lot of respect. Um, they are also players, but they are a customer of yours. Yeah, they are a customer and we want to make yeah. them happy. Right. That's so, right. Um, Absolutely. yeah, I, I think, you know, obviously our players, our customers are all players. Right. Mm-hmm. So they go hand in hand, you know. Um, yeah. so yeah, it is what it is. It's not like bars call you drinkers or Chick-fil-A call you <laughs> eaters. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. So the, uh, the best way that we can help is just by creating the best environment possible. Cause you never know who's standing right next to you. You never know who's walking down. Yeah, that, that's right. Yeah. We're, we're not big enough for drama yet. Right. We'll let the drama come in about four or five years or whatever. Right. So there we go. let us get our foot in the door and then you create drama. Right. It's yeah. like you're trying to rent a house. You don't let all your, your white trashness come out while you're trying to rent the house. You wait until after you've signed the lease, and then you can move in. you got to be on your best behavior at that point. March just uh, moved in. He's in the new studio right now, actually. Mm-hmm. You're on the YouTube. You're checking out the new studio here. Yeah, yeah it's been trophies in the back. It's yeah. It's been a, a wild couple of weeks, you know, getting my other place ready to sell and uh, actually just uh, accepted an offer last night, uh, this morning, early this morning. 5 30 this morning (laughs) thank you but yeah busy busy we've been running around and then trying to get the new house all dialed in but yeah the studio is is up and and you would uh you would think that uh the whole house is done but basically it's just this room complete the living room and the garage uh portion where i have the cold plunge it's the only spaces that are complete everything else is a mess still (laughs) it's pretty cool though get your priorities right Absolutely, yeah. that's what I that's what I was saying. You need to sleep. You got to do a podcast. That's the yep. way to go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I always want to set up the office first. That's for sure. He's mm-hmm. got one of the biggest TVs known to man in one of these rooms. The things like what, 190 inches? What is this thing? <laughs> 85 inches, bro. <laughs> thing's a monster. <laughs> Literally half yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, it does seem it does seem massive. The room's kind of small, so it seems even bigger. Dude, it's perfect. Yeah, it's absolutely perfect. And uh, we're excited, Tom. We're excited for all this news you've been breaking. Yeah, down. It's, it's really uh, some powerful stuff and very curious to see how it all progresses because you said there's also some things that we aren't able to quite talk about yet. And it's it's really exciting for the future of the game. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited. All right, hit me with the hard questions. I know some of the fans got some questions. Oh, you so. know it. The Discord, you know how okay, they Okay, let's <laughs> dive in for a quick little Discord session here. Um, well, Tom, again, you know, before we do get into the Discord questions, thank you for coming on the show and breaking that news. That's yeah. <clears throat> if the viewers don't understand how how massive that is, um, I don't know what to say because a million views on paintball and, and non paintball eyes to see what we do could potentially be really, really big, and it just shows that things are moving in the right direction and people involved in you know the streaming business and and involved in finding things that people are going to enjoy watching took an interest in paintball so it means that what you guys are doing what you know professional athletes in paintball are doing uh is we're on the right track we're definitely on well, the right and, track so and on that like the outside sponsor that wants to be a part of it right? yeah they have something like three million followers on their social media channel right so 
So oh, when they gosh. throw that out to them that they're, they're part of this, you know what I mean? That's just going to keep that growth going, right? It's exponential. What industry are they in? Clothing. Oh, all right. Damn, I didn't think I was going to get an answer on that. I should have I acted so surprised. I, <laughs> I shouldn't have acted so surprised. I could, I could, uh, I could have. Is it Levi's? <laughs> I used Wrangler earlier. Than my example, but that'd, be, that'd be funny if it was Levi's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Dickies. It's Dickies. See a lot of the, the you know, work. I think it's Dickies. He's calling the shot. He's calling the shot. <laughs> Well, Tom, we're uh, we're super excited too, brother. Did you see yeah. the solar eclipse? Were, were you in the pathway of that thing? Did you see? It I, I saw a little bit of it. I didn't really get it. I was I was on a Zoom call, so I kind of missed it. I just wondered why yeah. it was getting dark now. Yeah, it's crazy in Texas. Uh, Verb he got some insane footage of that, and a lot of people were checking that out. Pretty impressive stuff. That is good stuff. Good stuff. Yep. Um, okay, I got a good question from the Discord. Jimmy Hickey, uh, this is the owner of uh, Uprising, and uh, he wants to know, Tom, Tyler, and Marcelo, what are your thoughts on a pre-event press conference where, where a representative from each team is present to answer questions from the paintball media? Seems to be a major thing across most other sports, but something we don't see or discuss in the NXL. To me, it seems like a, a step further in the right direction for further legitimizing our sport while also adding valuable content for social media. I love the idea. Mm -hmm. um, I, will, uh, I will talk to my guys about trying to make it happen. Um, the real, the only challenge on our end is really just making sure the teams want to show up, right? So that, that pre-tournament press conference or even like the after game thing, right? It's like um, everybody always gives us grief about it. We've done it. I mean, we've pretended to do it before, right? We've scheduled it and just not follow through because we were, and I think we tried to do it at World Cup, the hurricane year. But, um, you know, you really got to find people that want to be on there to talk, right? And people are so busy planning and kind of doing that stuff that they don't want to show up. But I will, uh, I'll put it on my notes and we'll talk about it this week with my team and see if we can't come up with something so that's a great idea so they did in vegas they had the like the video shoot before the event where all the teams had to go to the go sports tent and you, you know they have the smoke machine back there and you're getting all these cool yeah. shots for go sports could have been a perfect time to also grab a couple interviews you know i think teams are willing to do it um the biggest thing that i would recommend is just make it easy for the teams to do you know if their time slot is 4 p.m don't have them waiting until 4.15 to start, 4.30 to start. Maybe just make it to where you can come and go all day on that Thursday as you please, you know, and whoever we can get, we can get, you know. Um, how, does, how does that normally work, though? So um, is it just – so, like, if Dynasty was playing Heat, right, so you guys are my two guys, don't I, don't I typically have both teams up there at the same time? Isn't that the proper way to do it? I'm just thinking of MMA with them all staring at each other, like, super hard. No. You do what I be kind of funny <laughs> yeah that would be, that would be pretty funny uh, i'd be like uh, staring up at the tower tyler yeah, yeah. don't beat me up Yo. um i uh no it doesn't have to be done like that in my opinion you know yes that's how it's done in in one on one combat sports but in like the nfl or the nba you'll have these press conferences it'll just be like the coach after practice you know and they're in their own locker room and it's just the coach and he's talking about you know the upcoming matchup with um yeah. you know the other basketball team or football team and uh, you're getting just these little sound bites to, to kind of play and generate a little bit of, um, you know, thickness to the story, I guess, if you will. Yeah, it's, yeah, no, I think it's neat. And plus, the more stuff we'd go to make it more legitimate. Do you think it needs to be private? So let's just say, you know, uh, I'm trying to think here. Todd Martinez thinks that, that the snake is going to be critical. And so he's going to really try and capture the snake, right? And Dynasty's like, you know, we, we know that. Everyone thinks the snake's the big deal, but we're actually going to go up the gut. Would I have to keep that private or are people not going to talk about that kind of stuff? Well, no. Yeah, that's the thing. It's the same thing in other sports, right? Like coaches, you can divulge whatever information you want. You know that the opponents might be listening. So, you know, you could be kind of honest. You can kind of be misleading. Like that's all part of the game. That's that's called playing the game. You know, like these interviews are public in other sports and coaches still give enough information and it's up to the coach to do the right job of, not giving up too much information and, you know, still providing a, a, a good interview because it's their own personal brand that's on the line. And then you have someone like Belichick that has one 
word answers and he was a great personality, you know? So like, I think that sorts itself out. I use it because we talked the other day about maybe having an injury report, right? Like have everybody put up who their starting line was going to be. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that was the first person I thought of was Belichick, right? He would, you know, you guys would have Ryan listed as injured reserve every event, just so no one knew if he was playing or not. Um, <laughs> and we have Ryan again. He's up there yeah. again, pulled a hamstring. No, you're, there are so many <laughs> different layers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can't take him off the field. There's so many different layers to the game when we start talking about those kind of layers of media. Um, and I think it would be a, a really cool thing to implement in the future is, you know, either pregame or postgame um, type uh, interviews. And we do have a lot of really good postgame, but the, the hype up, like maybe before the tournament of having coaches and players sit down, that would be pretty cool to hear their thoughts on the tournament kind of going into the event and add some good media there. Yeah, no, it'd be neat. It'd be neat. Yep. Okay. okay. We got, uh, Mar Mark Paris. He's wondering, Tom, the UFC was out in Vegas. Uh, what were they doing out there at the, uh, the event walking around out there? Maybe they were just watching. Yeah. They're, um, they're... We've been talking to those guys about some opportunities. Um, it's probably the best I'm going to give you. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> yeah, we, we've uh, we've met with the UFC guys a couple times. Um, I flew out to Vegas. Um, they came out to Vegas for that that show. Um, so we're, we're talking to them. Cool. And they're they're interested in paintball. And if nothing else, they just like the game and, and are enjoying it. Yep, they've been great to talk to. I've learned a lot from them. I actually I owe them an email right now. So there we so go. Just uh, CC yeah. me on that email. That's um all over yeah. it. All over. It. Or if you want, I can proofread it. Make sure it's, you know, make sure it's spelled right, correctly. You spelled correctly. Grammar's all in line. He's I got you, Tom. Man. I got you. I reader. won't, I will not share the news either on PTG. I really uh, wouldn't. I really wouldn't. I believe you. I believe yeah. you. Um, you know, oh, Dylan Boyum is, is in here and he actually, uh, to double back, should NXL pro teams be required to submit an injury report? So that's funny. We were talking about it. Um, I do think that'd be a good idea, especially now that gambling has been introduced. I think that's a pretty important part of, of it, you know? Yeah, the challenge, the challenge we always face, and it's uh, I, I've gone back and forth, right? So I was a pro team owner for a while, too, right, in the NPL era, right? And when we first started making a lot of these steps, you know, my rub was always like, you know, they're like, we need you to do this. And I'm like, I'm your customer, right? Like, I, I don't want, right. you know, if someone says no, then I, I don't have any recourse. So mm -hmm. that, that's always been kind of the challenge, right, to find ways to incentivize people to do what we want them to do without creating a problem, right? Yeah. And, and, Totally. stuff that we need right so um yeah. yeah sometimes it's easier just to start over understandable <laughs> start right, over. Uh, we got baby huey tom with one event uh done what are your initial thoughts about the changes to the field layout in, reg in regards to the snake beams and will we see even more snake beams maybe in the future i'm gonna pray that we don't have more snake beams in the future um i think the field's got a lot of snake beams now i, I thought that layout was amazing Right. Like, mm -hmm. I think the whole time I kept saying, you know, because there was some questions about like our bunker kit. And I just said I had faith in Jason. Right. You got to have faith in your people. And um, I thought that layout was amazing. I thought it was great. I know I know Marcelo doesn't like the the crazy off centered ones. Um, but now that I think that he's won one, he might feel a little bit different about it. But um, no, Tom, again, I thought we talked about this on the I, I have to interject yeah. there. No, I, I we have to. We have to make this very clear. It's not about playing them. Playing yeah, them is, is fine. Yes. Uh, so, yes, yes I, I wasn't happy with the spectator ability of it, um, but I thought it was a neat layout and it played well, um, which is our yeah. core product, right? Is people people shooting each other. So um, that part worked out well, made for some exciting games. It was a little confusing, especially when you're looking at the webcast and the live game. Yes. Um, that's, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, but I, I think the layouts of, I mean, or the snake beams have been an asset. Yeah. And the viewers so, loved that field. I had countless people tell me how entertaining that particular field layout was to watch. It was pretty good, right? Yeah. It was pretty good. So, yeah. and we, I mean, we had a pretty epic final too, right? So it's hard to, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we had what a triple overtime at some point in time. And then, and then the final match was a great match, right? Dynasty was down three, I believe. And then they came back to win it. I mean, that's, yeah, that's story worthy there, right? That's good stuff. Everybody won a point um, except for one team. And, uh, you know, it was a great, great weekend. Mm -hmm. 
Wait, there was a team that didn't win a point all didn't win a match. I mean, didn't win. Oh, 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 oh. I, mean, I was like, whoa. Sorry. I didn't, yeah, I it's it. okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I know what team that was. Um, all right. My last question from the Discord is Perkadirk. Tom, give us the juice. Please share what conversations are being had about relegation changes, if any. Hmm. Um, we have no real plans to change the relegation system at this point in time. How's that for double okay. speak? Yeah, um, I mean, I haven't heard of it of anything. Yeah, no, I, we 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 look at it occasionally. You know, um, there is. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the 20 teams. I think we have great parity. Um, I think all the teams are performing well. Even the the teams that don't do well, you, you know, they're still in the running, right? On any given day, they're going to come back and put a, a whooping on people, right? So. Um, I think we have a great, great parity in the division. Um, and I do think that the next step below is a little below that. So it'll be interesting to see how it works out. Um, but yeah, I'm not looking to change anything. The only real, at some point in time, and this is a future problem, but at some point in time, we're probably going to want to have some type of Super Bowl, right? Which is because right now we're just running tournaments, right? It's, it's, it's a tournament, not a league. And we've, and, I've always thought we were a league, right? I thought paintball was ran as a league, but we're not. We're run as a tournament. A series of tournaments with a series prize. But, like, that Champions Cup idea that we pitched or whatever, and maybe that, you know, in the end we do a special event that's just the five winners of the events. They get to go to a place, and that's what we really film. Because that's one of the other challenges. Um, it just our, – our venues look like crap after three days of paintball, right? Mm -hmm. And and also trying to to – produce a show that's three days long right so you're always cutting corners because of the length of the show if that makes sense right yeah like if you're gonna stay at a hotel for three weeks versus one night right it's we're spending the same amount of money you get a much better hotel for three thousand dollars for one night than you do trying to get three thousand dollars over 30 nights you know what i mean so that's kind of what we're doing with the broadcast so it'd be neat to have like a one day of paintball that's just the best of the best type of deal so mm -hmm. Um, cool. And just finding a way to make that work financially. But I mean, I think that would be a neat thing, right? In the off season yeah. or at the end of the season, the winners move and that's the Champions Cup, the five best guys come or whatever the number is. And we play a, you know, a low impact tournament. So the field looks nice and we get all that drama. Plus you'd have the five best teams. Yeah, it sounds fun. It sounds fun, Tommy. And we can't thank you enough, good sir, for everything that you've been doing, working so hard, uh, making these paintball goals come to life so we thank you tom and uh and hope you feel better i know you're a little under the weather so hopefully you feel better rolling into to texas there yeah yeah let's hope so well you're going uh, to vegas actually first I'm going to yeah. vegas on monday yeah so yeah. sunday i leave sunday for a monday Jeez. show so hopefully yeah. we're uh <clears throat> plenty yeah. of time you'll be yeah. you'll be fine by then yeah plenty of time Tom, uh, let's, you know, here, everyone listening to this episode, if you guys could go to Instagram, go to Caffeine, their, their handle is literally Caffeine, C-A-F-F-E-I-N-E, -E, and leave a comment on some of their posts, you know, talking about paintball. Uh, I think that would probably be, is that okay, Tom? Are we allowed to that'd do that? Amazing. Yeah, that'd be that'd be, that would be amazing. Let's do that. Let's show out. Anytime paintball is on, you know, uh, sports center or house of highlights and all these things the paintball community is excellent about showing out sharing it all that kind of stuff i think if we could get in there and start leaving you know fun comments like you know when are we gonna see paintball on here i can't wait to see paintball on here yeah that, that could go a long way let's do it let's let's see what kind of uh what kind of impact we could have you know they have three hundred and sixty-two thousand followers right now everybody go give them a follow i just did um but guys this is you know guys and gals this is this is the way forward you know, this is the way forward. We want them to uh, see the value in in taking the chance on our sport. So help us out. Do it now, right now. Go over there. Do it now. Yes. Yeah. Do it now. Yeah. None of this stuff is ever free money, right? Everybody always thinks that there's like this holy grail, right? And it's really a symbiotic relationship, right? They're trying to to reach our players, and if we show them that we are reaching our players, or the players show that they're reach, getting reached, um, that goes a long ways towards moving it forward. So yeah. exactly. We'll do it now unless you're driving. Make sure you're safe out there, okay? And make sure you go log in and uh, and get these likes up. Get the, you know, whatever way we can. Just leave a comment. Do whatever you can to help boost caffeine and all that they're doing for paintball. And Tommy, 
We can't wait to see you soon. We'll see you here shortly in a couple weeks out in uh, Texas. And we'll have another fun event out there. Good deal. All right. Yes, Thanks, guys. Thank yes, you, brother. Thank you, Tom. Have a good one, Tom. Later, you bro. too. All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to ptgpaintball.com. Click the orange Patreon link in the corner and support the show. We greatly appreciate it. We have tiers as low as $1.99 a month. That is nothing, guys. And it'll give you access to the Discord where you get access to the players chat and get to mingle with the entire PTG community. We have tons of different pros in there. Tyler and myself are very active and it's an amazing way to support the show we also have amazing other tiers if you want to be one of the best want to be a goat sign up for the goat tier it's the greatest way to support us and each month we do a private live stream show one-on-one -on -one kind of thing to where it's just the goats and tyler myself will bring in some special guests every now and then but you get to ask us questions in real time live on the air and you get lots of inside juicy news that we don't share uh on the show so as always we will see you guys very soon.